I guess it turns out that some people don't like the new Windows 11 File Explorer. So today, I'm going to show you how to change it back. Stay tuned. So in late 2022, Microsoft massively revamped Windows File Explorer. One of the biggest features that they added was tabs. Now, I personally like it, but in reality, it was the most basic implementation of tabs that Microsoft could have possibly done, but it does work. However, some people like the ribbon interface that's used in the File Explorer from Windows 10. There used to be a really easy registry hack that would give you back the Windows 10 File Explorer in Windows 11. However, when Microsoft released the new tabbed File Explorer, they broke the ability to go back to the Windows 10 File Explorer in Windows 11. So today, I'm going to show you how to get it back anyway. But first, I got to pay some bills, so check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop with a valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. Now, the way we're going to be doing this is by using an app that I've covered several times on this channel. That app is called Explorer Patcher. The last time I covered Explorer Patcher, it wasn't exactly working very well. Unfortunately, it had a few pretty serious bugs, but there were some workarounds that would get the program kind of working. Luckily, it's been updated since then, and it's running a lot better. However, you have to keep in mind that Explorer Patcher is a free and open source program that's being developed by just some dude like you and me. There's not some giant company backing it, helping to get updates out when Microsoft changes something in Windows that breaks it. Also, the fact that Explorer Patcher is kind of an all-in-one Swiss Army knife for the Windows 11 UI, it's really easy to break when Microsoft changes the Windows 11 UI. So, if you like this program and you'd like to see it updated in a timely manner, then don't forget that you can donate to the developer. But with that said, let's jump on the system and I'll show you how to restore the Windows 10 File Explorer. And we'll also go through some of the other settings in Explorer Patcher, you know, just in case you haven't seen it before. Okay, so if you're on Windows 11, then you're familiar with this right here. This is the File Explorer from Windows 11. And as you can see, one of the biggest changes in the new File Explorer is the tabbed interface. You know, your ability to have multiple different tabs in Windows 11. And, you know, I kind of like it. I've liked the interface, but some people absolutely despise it. And I can see why, you know. Sometimes changes don't happen in the way that you want them to change. And for stuff like that, it's good to be able to go back to the way things used to be before. And for that, it's going to be really easy. So we're going to go ahead and close File Explorer here. And we're going to jump into Chrome and we're going to go over to Explorer Patcher on GitHub. Now, I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description below. But as you can see, this program was updated right at the end of December. So it's about a month old at this point. So it's a much newer version than the one that we played around with last time. So to download this, all you got to do is go ahead and click on releases right here. We'll click on latest and then scroll down and we want this executable right here. And once you click there, it should download relatively quickly. And then from this point, we're going to go ahead and open up our file explorer and we're going to install the program. But first, I'm going to go ahead and close the browser real quick here and then just double click on this executable and it should go ahead and install it once you give it user account control. And then your screen's going to go black for a second and then it should come back and everything should look exactly the same as it did before. And as you can see, if you were to open up File Explorer, you still have the tabbed interface that you had before. However, we're gonna change that by simply right-clicking on the taskbar, and as you'll see, we got a lot of other options here that we didn't have before. And what we want is to select Properties, and that'll open up the File Explorer settings right here. And to change our File Explorer, we wanna click on File Explorer from the menu right here. And then we wanna go over to right here where it says Control Interface, and right, 
by default, it says Windows 11 command bar. And we're gonna go ahead and click on that and we're gonna change it to the Windows 10 ribbon. And then from there, you click on this link that says Restart File Explorer, and it should restart your Windows Explorer. And once it restarts, we're gonna go ahead and open up our File Explorer, and as you can see, now we have the old Windows 10 File Explorer. And as you probably noticed, while we were playing around right here, you can see that you can also change this to the Windows 7 command bar as well. So we're gonna go ahead and restart File Explorer real quick, and we'll take a look at what that looks like. And as you can see, this looks a lot more reminiscent to Windows 7 right here. So if that's what you want, then that's an easy way to get it just like that. So just interrupting this video really fast because I noticed there's one thing that I completely forgot to cover. And that's if you change File Explorer to the old fashioned style File Explorer, there is still a bug in Explorer Patcher. And if you only change the Explorer window and nothing else, well, if you go to right click, you're gonna crash Explorer every time. And that's because for some reason, if you change your file explorer to any different kind of explorer, anything other than the Windows 11 command bar, then you have to also disable the Windows 11 context menu. Now, I think that's a good thing because the Windows 11 context menu sucks. However, if you don't do that, you'll never be able to right click on anything without Explorer crashing. So go ahead and disable the Windows 11 context menu, restart file explorer, and that should fix the problem. Now, back to the video. Now, as we're sitting here in Windows with Explorer Patcher open, there's no need to just look at the File Explorer settings. Let's go over some of the other settings in this program, and I'll show you why it's one of my favorite programs to modify the UI in Windows 11. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is jump up to Taskbar right here, and we're just gonna go down the list and kinda see some of the highlights of some of the things that I wanna show you guys. So the first one is, as you can see, our taskbar style is Windows 11. And if you look down here, it looks like Windows 11. But we can change this to Windows 10 as well. And then once we change that, we gotta go ahead and hit the Restart File Explorer. And we're gonna be hitting this link a lot. But as you can see, once it starts back up, you can see your computer looks a lot more like Windows 10. However, you click the Start menu, it still opens in the middle, which I find kind of funny. And some of the other settings that you can also change in this is if you notice right here, if you have any kind of different programs open, you'll see that the taskbar is currently set to never combine. So if you have multiple different windows open, like for instance, let's open multiple file explorer windows. And as you can see, they don't combine. And some people really like this functionality. Me personally, I kind of like combining them. So if you want to combine it kind of like windows typically does at default, then you can go right into here where it says combine taskbar icons, and you can just change this to all always combine, or you can also do combine when full. I usually keep mine at always combine, and then that'll give you more of a typical Windows 10 desktop. But if you don't like them combined, then don't change that setting. Also, another big complaint with Windows 11 is that you can't move your taskbar around. However, with Explorer Patcher, it does allow you to change the location of the taskbar. So you can click Top of the screen, we can hit Restart File Explorer, and as you can see, now our taskbar is up at the top of the screen. Of course, that kind of drives me crazy. I like to have it down at the bottom, so I'm gonna put it back there, but you can decide to put it anywhere you want on the screen. You can even put it on the left and right if you want to. And you can also disable the Search and Task View buttons from right here within Explorer Patcher as well. However, those ones you can also disable from the regular Windows settings too. However, another setting in here that you can do without Explorer Patcher, but it's a lot harder, is the taskbar icon size. Now, as you can see, right now our taskbar icons are just a regular default size. However, if we change this to small, you can see they get a lot tinier. So if you wanna save some space on your taskbar, that's a good way to do it. Me personally, I'm gonna put it back to default. Now the next thing we'll look at is our system tray. Now if we go through the system tray, there's a lot of different settings that you can change right here. And that's essentially this little area right down here at the right hand side of the screen. For instance, one of the things that really drives me crazy is with the network icon, if you right click and hit open network and internet settings, it goes into your settings panel. Now I would really like it to go into the network and sharing center, but unfortunately, Microsoft has pretty much disabled that from Windows 11. However, if you close this right here, you can change that setting right here as choose open network and internet settings when right clicking on the network icon. If you change this, you can change it to network and sharing center, or you can just go straight to network connections and control panel. So this is the one that I would change it to. Now, if you right click on your network icon and click open network and internet settings, you get your regular network and sharing center. And then from there, you can go to the adapter settings there if you want to. However, I think this is a much more usable control panel than the settings menu, but 
That's just the way I am. I like control panel better than settings personally. Now, if we close this right here, some of the other things we can look at is our our system icon tray settings. That's essentially all these icons down here. Now in Windows 11, by default, no matter what icon you click on right here, it gives you this right here, the control center, which me personally, I find really annoying because if I click on the network icon or the volume icon, I don't want all this other crap. I just want the one thing that I clicked on. And luckily with Explorer Patcher, you can restore that functionality. So now by clicking on the network, you just get the network. If I clicking on the volume, you just get the volume. So it, I think that's a lot more usable. However, if you like it to open up into the control center, then you can always change that just like this. And by changing that, all you gotta do now is click on it and you get the control center like the Windows 11 default. But me personally, I'm gonna leave that the way it is. However, you can actually set this thing to go into different things as well. Like you can have it go straight to the network and sharing center if you want. And that way, when you click on your network icon, it just goes straight into the network and sharing center. But for me, I'd like it to stay with the Windows 10 flyout, but you can also do maybe even the Windows 11 flyout if you want, you know, why everyone would wanna do that, I don't know, but you have the option to do it if you want to. And if for whatever reason you are just sick and tired of this whole control center and you want to get rid of it completely, you can come up here and uncheck it just like that and then restart File Explorer and the icon goes away completely and you never have to look at it again. Now, if we go back into the File Explorer menu like we were before, there's a lot of other settings in here that I'd like to look at also. Like for instance, you can also use the legacy file transfer dialog, which personally, I like the new one. And let me show you what that is. So if I open up File Explorer here, I'm just gonna jump onto my network and I'm gonna copy this ISO file to our desktop. So if you drag it over here, you can see that this right here is the file transfer dialog box. And personally, I like this. I think it gives you a lot of information and I, I've never had an issue with it. However, if you like the old one, I'm gonna go ahead and close this real quick and we're gonna switch this and say, always use the legacy file transfer. And then we're gonna click on our file explorer. We're gonna drag this again and as you can see, this is the old style file transfer dialog box. And you know, like I said, this one here just doesn't have the information. I like having the transfer rates and stuff like that in there. And this one right here kind of sort of gives you a little bit. And then if you click more details, you can get more details like that. So you can actually get the transfer rate and stuff, but I kind of like the newer one better, you know, just me. But if you don't, you can change it back. So we're gonna go ahead and cancel that again and we'll move on to the next thing. And that's gonna be a setting that I don't know if it's broken or not, but I noticed this one right here and it kind of piqued my interest. And that's this one right here where it says use classic drive groupings in this PC. And if we go over and open up this PC, I'm gonna click there and you can see, I'm assuming what they're talking about by drive groupings is this right here. However, if I go use classic drive groupings, we're gonna go ahead and close this and open it up again, go to this PC. I don't see any changes. So if you guys can tell me what that setting actually does, or if it might be broken in the newest version of Explorer Patcher, then let me know below. But I don't know. And the next setting we're gonna go to, now we're gonna move on to our start menu. And with the start menu, by default, it uses the Windows 11 start menu. Now, the funny thing about that is, if you click the start menu after you change the taskbar to Windows 10, your start menu opens in the middle still, which honestly, it, it's a little, unintuitive, but it is it is what it is. But you can also change the start menu style from Windows 11 back to the Windows 10 start menu. Now there are some issues using the Windows 10 start menu in Windows 11. And if you want, you can go ahead and click on this link right here and it will open it up and it will tell you what those, what those problems are. And most of it is about pinning to the start menu and things of that nature. I'll let you guys go ahead and read that yourself. However, I've noticed that the functionality is pretty good and I haven't seen any issues with it. So some of the downsides or some of the bugs that are currently affecting the Windows 10 start menu don't seem to affect me. However, if we restart File Explorer and we look at the Windows 10 start menu, if we click on it, it still opens in the middle, which is kind of funny for the Windows 10 start menu to open in the middle. But you can change that right here. You can change the position to at the edge of screen. And then if you open it, then it'll open in the proper position of where it's supposed to be. But now that we're here, this isn't actually the Windows 10 start menu. This is just a recreation of it done by Explorer Patcher, but it's a 
pretty good recreation. It's about a perfect recreation of the start menu, I think. But what you can do is you can do a lot of tweaks to it as well. So let me show you some of these. For instance, the corner preference, you can have it not rounded, which would be the default for Windows 10, or you can also do it in a rounded docked menu or a rounded floating menu. So let's go ahead and look at both of them. If we go to rounded corners docked, and then we open it up, you can see that now all the corners are rounded on it, just like kind of more similar to the Windows 11 start menu. However, if we go to the rounded corners and the floating menu, then you'll notice that this is a lot more like the Windows 11 menu. In fact, it actually has all four corners rounded and it's floating kind of above the taskbar like Windows 11. So if you wanted to use this, what you could do is you could put this at the center of the screen, go back to your taskbar and go back to the Windows 11 taskbar. We're gonna go ahead and restart real quick. So now when you click on your start menu, you have the Windows 10 start menu, but it's in the middle like Windows 11. That's one of the reasons why I think Explorer Patcher is such a useful app because of some of the mods you can do. You can have a pretty much hybrid version of Windows within Windows 11. Now the other thing I wanted to look at, if we go back over to start menu, you can also change the display mode, which essentially this gives you kind of the Windows 8 style start menu. So if we go to full screen start, go ahead and hit yes to the administrator permissions. And now if we click on the start menu, you have more of a Windows 8 style full screen start menu, which honestly, I never liked Windows 8 in the first place. So I wouldn't really make use of that, but you also have, I'm gonna go ahead and change that back. You can also change the way the app list is set up. So the app list, if you click on the start menu, the app list is this list right here in the middle. So if you want, you could actually go to hide the app list completely. And by hiding it, when we open the start menu now, it essentially just gives us our tiles and that's it but we can click on it right here and then we can get our app list. So it kind of breaks the menu up a little bit so you have your app list and your tiles on different menus. However, you can actually disable the app list completely and by doing that, it gives you no access whatsoever to the app list. Now, I think this section right here, when it comes to the app list, would work really good on systems that have programs that you don't want people using. For instance, if you have a computer set up in a library or a school or somewhere in a workplace where you don't want people to get to the app list, you want them just to use specific apps, this would come in really handy. In fact, I may use this at some point. Okay, so the next thing I want to look at right here is the Windows Switcher. And essentially what the Windows Switcher is, is just your Alt-Tab to be able to switch between different programs and things of that nature. Now, there's really only one setting in here, and you can switch the Windows Switcher to different versions of the Windows Switcher from different versions of Windows. Now, we can go back to the Windows 10, so if we set it back to Windows 10, Restart File Explorer, and then we'll go ahead and look at what that one looks like. This one's essentially... Oh, it closed our file explorer. So let's get a couple applications open here so we can actually see what it does. So if we hit Alt-Tab now, you can see this is the Windows 10 Windows Switcher. Now you can also go to the Windows NT style, which if you guys were around during Windows NT, it was kind of basic compared to the way it is now. But if we open some apps up right there and we hit Alt-Tab, you can see this is the classic Windows Switcher that we had for years with Windows NT, Windows 98, and different programs like that. Now you can also go to a simple Windows Switcher, and this gives you tons of different settings right here. And this one's more of a custom Windows Switcher. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Restart File Explorer, and I'll, I'll show you what this one looks like just in its somewhat default form. But if we hit Alt-Tab now, it gives you one that looks kind of similar to the Windows 11 one. However, it has tons of different settings that you can change to change kind of the usability or the, the different ways that it functions, but I'll let you go through that yourself. Now, the next one I wanna look at requires us to switch the taskbar back to the Windows 10 style. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm also gonna go to the Start menu and I'm gonna set it over to the edge of the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Restart File Explorer, get us back to our Windows 10. And as you notice, there's a link here called Weather that doesn't show up unless you're in the Windows 10 taskbar. Now, this is not Windows Weather. This is not the typical weather icon that you get in Windows. but I'm I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on right here. And as you can see, you have essentially this little weather icon right here that looks a lot like the Microsoft one, but it's really not. This is a, a completely custom version of the weather icon that I think is actually usable. So if you click on it, it gives you your weekly forecast and also gives you tons of information right here. However, you can go through and you can change a lot of the settings on this thing. You can change the temperature units, you can change even the size of the 
actual widget itself. You can have it say automatically fit or you can have it fixed. You can also even change the icon pack from Microsoft to Google. And as you can see, it will change all the icons to the more Google looking icons. But for me, I kind of like the Microsoft icons. I don't know if there's a way that you can add different icon packs to it, but if there is, then let me know down in the comments below. So if you go right here, right, it by default goes to the right bottom, but you can click right here and you can have it go to the left top. And that essentially sends it, that's not really the left top, that's the left bottom, I would think. But if you, yeah, I, I don't know. So either way, you can have it on this side or you can flip it over to that side over there. And you can also change the size of the widget as well. So you can make it go all the way down to 25%. So if you click on it, it gives you this itty bitty little weather icon, but you can also go to 200% and it gives you this really giant weather widget. So I think this is a very useful weather icon. And when you click on it, it doesn't give you a bunch of news articles that you really don't want to see. And if you just mouse over it, it doesn't open a stupid menu that you really didn't want because you were trying to go for the network icon and not Microsoft's propaganda. And another thing I wanted to look at right here real quick before we went is if you click over into other right down here at the bottom, there's some useful settings right here. This says prevent the following control panel links from being redirected to the settings app. Now, this is a huge thing right here and it allows you to choose which ones you want and which ones you don't want. However, let me let me show you what this actually means. If we click on the start button and we search for control panel and we open this up right here and we were to click on, let's just say we wanna click on system and security and we wanna go into system. Well, if you click on that, it reroutes you to the settings app. We'll say you want the original system link. So if we close that, we're gonna go ahead and check this right here. And now if we click on system, it opens system just like you want it to. I think just these settings right here make this program worthwhile by themselves, not even counting all the other cool stuff you can do with it. So one of the reasons that I really like this program is not only because, well, it's free, but it does really a really good job of bringing the Windows 10 UI into Windows 11. Now, I don't use Windows 11 on a daily basis. All of my systems are still running Windows 10, but there's coming a day that's not too long away that Windows 10 is going to lose support. When that day comes, we'll have no other choice than to upgrade to Windows 11 or Windows 12, depending on how good that release is going to be. So when that day comes, I like the fact that I'll still be able to enjoy a lot of the things that I've came to like about Windows 10. But with all that said, if you like customizing the UI of Windows, then check out this playlist where I show you how to turn Windows 11 into pretty much any previous version of Windows available. Um, I'm missing a few, but not many. As always, you guys have a great day.